In this tutorial, we'll discuss how a particle system works and all of the parts involved to create it. All right, so let's go ahead and create our first particle system. So to do this, I'm going to right click and go to New Particle System. This is going to bring up our new dialog box and you're going to fill in the info here. So if you want to create a new package, just go ahead and fill in that uh, to whatever name you want. In this case, I'm going to use my DT underscore effects package and then I'm going to create a group for my particle systems. So in this case I'm going to type in particle systems and no spaces in that and just using that camel casing uh, convention and then we're going to give this a name. So whatever the name of your file you want this particle system to be. So normally I like to use a naming convention that's pretty consistent with my particle system. So I like to type in FX and then underscore and then whatever the name of this particle system whatever it's going to be so in this case I'm going to call this basic and then I like to give it a, a suffix as well now a suffix is just kind of an identifier that I can look through a list and I can say okay this is a particle system this is a material this is a texture um, really really quickly so I like to type in underscore PS for particle system now you want to make sure that this is a particle system factory so that way whenever we double click on it to edit the particle system it's going to bring up cascade so once we hit open or OK it's going to open cascade and we'll see that we have our basic particle system now with a particle system um, it's made up of emitters and modules Okay. now the particle system itself to be able to access its properties we need to uh, first off right click on the emitter and go to particle system and then select particle system this will bring up those properties now these properties should be here whenever you first open up the particle system itself and you can access it that way as well by closing cascade and then reopening it All right. now inside of these properties we're going to have um, a few things to deal with uh, not necessarily in this lesson but later on whenever we start to talk about LODs and optimization now moving on from particle systems themselves we have emitters now emitters are a single particle effect that is held in our particle system and we can have multiple emitters inside of a single particle system so right now I have one emitter and if I wanted to add a new emitter I could right click and say new particle sprite emitter and you can see now I have two and that has updated accordingly now these emitters will work independently of one another so I can um, create one behavior in this emitter and I can adjust these modules that belong in this emitter and that will create a different behavior here than over here All right. so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this particle emitter I'm going to right click and go to emitter and then delete emitter Okay, and that will get rid of that now inside of your emitters once you have it selected it's going to highlight in orange and you'll notice a couple of different things that are going to help us out with organization uh, first thing you'll notice is it's color coded and we can change that color by coming right down here in our properties and adjusting that color to whatever we want so if you have a specific uh, color coding convention that you want to use by all means go ahead and do so um, another thing that you're going to notice is we can give our particle emitter a specific name so in this case I could call this basic um, and then hit enter and that's going to update accordingly now this is really helpful if we have a particle system like a fire that we want to create and we're going to create that one later on um, here in just a couple of lessons um, we could go ahead and call this emitter fire or primary and then we could create another emitter and call that one smoke um, and then so on and so forth now we also have a couple of um, view toggles that we can work with here the first one is is it enabled or disabled so if I left click on it it's going to disable that to where I can't see it if I click on it again it's going to enable that moving on from there we have our render modes so if I left click on this it's going to change this to a different render mode so to start out this icon is the normal rendering mode if I left click on it again that's going to bring me to my point rendering mode if we click on it again it's going to go to crosses and then it's going to set this to none and you can see that red X there now if you left click on it again it'll go back to normal now we can also access these right down here in our properties under the rendering mode section and you can choose exactly which one you want at any time 
Now normally I'm just going to leave it on normal. Now moving on from there we have what's called solo and this is going to be very helpful whenever we have multiple emitters inside of our particle system and we're trying to get a specific behavior out of one specific emitter. So let's go ahead and turn that off and let's move on to our next section in our emitters which are going to be our modules. Now modules are used to apply different effects to particles that are released by the emitter itself. Um, they interact with each other based on their order in the stack. As you can see here that we have a stack of modules and these are our default modules that we'll see. And these modules are just going to give us a basic uh, movement and basic particle system. Alright, so just to kind of go through these different modules, um, let's talk about um, the default modules really quickly just to kind of get a handle on how modules work exactly. Uh, so the first one is required and this contains all the properties that are required by this emitter. So here we have things like our material, uh, the screen alignment of that particle, and uh, several other uh, different properties that we can access as well. But again, we don't want to get too far into these different properties as we're going to be talking about this and creating these throughout this course. Moving on, we have our spawn and spawn is going to determine how particles are spawned from the emitter itself. So we have things like the spawn rate, spawn scale, and then we even have burst. And this is going to give us a different type of spawning behavior. Moving on in our next module, we have our lifetime. And this sets the initial lifetime of a particle at spawn time itself. So with our lifetime, you see that we have our lifetime distribution, and then we have a minimum and a maximum value that we can adjust. So if I want my particles to live longer, I'm going to adjust these values. So um, I'm going to set this to 10, and both of those, so my min and max, and you'll see that my particles will live for 10 seconds. Okay, and then once they reach the end of that, they will die. Now let's go ahead and make this a little bit lower so we can see that a little bit easier. And here you can see that those are going up, they're living for two seconds, and then they're dying. Now I could also set up a range in which I want my particles to live uh, in this emitter. And this is going to create a little bit of a randomness uh, to this. So if I want to set this to something like one, you'll see that some particles die before others. Okay, some live a little bit longer, and that just creates a little bit of randomness. Moving on, we have initial size, and here you can see that we have a start size, and we have a distribution of max and min, and under those we have x, y, and z, and with our size, uh, we can set this to one consistent size, or we could create a range in all of those. So x and y is going to be our height and width of our particle, and then our z um, is going to be our depth here. So let's change our x uh, to, let's say, 40. You'll see that those, some of those become a little bit larger. Okay, setting that to 40 there. We have some particles that are larger. We have some smaller ones and things like that. And again, that's because we have different values in our min and max, and that's creating a range. If we want a consistent size all the way through, we need to make sure that our min and our max match in all directions, x, y, and z. All right. So now that we have our size, let's move on to initial velocity, and this is going to be the speed or velocity of our particles. Okay. So at spawn time, um, they have an initial velocity, and right now the max is set to 10, and the minimum is set to negative 10. So they're going to be slower, some are going to be a little bit faster than others. So if I set my max to something like 40, on all of these directions here. You can see that some are moving out, and it's kind of spreading out in a cone. And then 100 is the movement upward. So if I set this to 200, you'll see that some of those are going much faster than others. And we get a different behavior here. Uh, we could set this up here to be a little bit different. So I could say negative 40, negative 40. Okay, and we get a little bit more of a spread there and then my minimum value is set to 50. I can set that to 100 and get something totally different. Okay, So again, working with those ranges, min and max, and just kind of playing around with some of those values. Uh, moving on to our final default um, module that we have here is our color over life.
Now the color over life is a little bit more a um, little bit more in depth and it can be a little confusing if you're not exactly sure of how this module works. You can see here that we have color and color uh, doesn't really seem like it has anything that I can adjust. I have these points that I can start to adjust and I can set their values and, and things like that but uh, it's kind of hard to understand exactly. Well you can notice here that we have things like the tangent and we have this interp mode and things like that. So what does that mean? Well this is all going to be very helpful and easier to control inside of our curve editor. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize those. I'm not even going to worry about what's in there for right now. Just Let's go ahead and just select this curve editor. And what this is going to do is expose the values inside of our curve editor. And you can see that I have my color over life and then I have my alpha over life. Now we're not going to be able to see much of a change in um, any of these values whenever we change these around because the material that's being used here really isn't uh, allowed to access the color or even the alpha here. So just to kind of uh, humor you and, and getting you an idea of how the curve editor works you can see that we have tangents and these tangents are basically these little squares and these squares are color coded in red, green, and blue or X, Y, and Z. Now some of them, like alpha over life, only has a red value. Okay, So that's uh, available. Now we can enable or disable that specific um, curve in our curve editor by clicking on this yellow uh, button here. And you can see right now we only have access to our alpha over life. Now alpha over life isn't going to be helpful because this material doesn't necessarily have an alpha to access in the material. So I'm going to remove this curve from the curve editor. So I'm going to right click on it and say remove curve and that's going to be gone. Now I'm going to enable my color over life and let's start to adjust these values. So with color over life what I could do is I could double click on uh, or I'm sorry select one of these values and then right click on it and go to set color. And here I can adjust this value to something like blue and hit OK and you'll see that those values change to create that blue color and then I can come over here and select it right click go to set color and I'll set this to red and then hit OK and you'll see that those values change there to make sure that this changes to a red color whenever it's finished now looking at this you'll see uh, that it's not changing from blue or red and that's because the material is not set up for that process so now that we have kind of discussed the default modules, let's really quickly talk about adding new modules, removing modules, and then reordering those modules because that's going to be very helpful as we progress throughout this course. So to add a new module, we'll come up here to our emitters list and we're going to right click and you'll see here that we have all of these different categories of modules that we have available to us. So if I wanted to add something like this orbit to my module, you'll see that it begins to scatter my particles and kind of rotate those around and spin those along a specific axis. So that is adding a module. Now with modules, uh, we may add some in and we may not like their effect or something like that. Let's go ahead and let's let's right click and let's add a new module in here. Um, let's do something like uh, rotation uh, let's do rotation rate. So initial rotation rate and you'll see that those begin to spin and let's say that I didn't like that value so I can right click on that module and just say delete module and that will get rid of it. Now if I hit undo really quickly and get that back um, what we can do is reorder these modules and reordering them is going to be very important uh, on understanding exactly how the stack works. So whenever a particle is spawned, it's going to go right down the stack in order. So it's going to go ahead and get its material. It's going to spawn and know how many to spawn. It's going to know exactly how long each one is supposed to live, their size, their speed. It's going to go into that color over life if that's available. I can go ahead and get rid of that right now if I don't necessarily need that. So I'm going to delete that module for right now. I have my orbit, which is going to go ahead and start to orbit those, and then I have my initial rotation rate. Okay. Now if I reorder these, 
we'll get a little bit of a different um, type of reaction out of this. Now some are going to be more um, apparent than others. So you know this may not have been the the best example to show you an extreme but it is important to remember that the order of the stack is going to uh, really affect the overall particle system.